Yes, sir. It's your boy back with another video for those of you guys that are new here. Welcome. My name is Idris Ibrahim. I am an incoming down student at The Ohio State University. The purpose of this channel is to inspire and elevate and hopefully you get inspired by these videos and also you get to elevate yourself with these videos. Uh, so today I woke up feeling great. So I decided to put on the most fruity shirt in my closet since I am a fruity guy. It didn't go hand in hand, but this is really a nice shirt. I wore like twice or something, but it's really nice. I like it. No complaints. Okay, without further ado, uh, in this video, I will be continuing on with the bootcamp series. If you didn't check out my last video, pause it. There is a lot of great information there. While I did talk about majors, classes, and also GPAs you need to get into dental school, and I did include my personal stats, what my GPA was, what classes I took. When I was applying to dental school, I wish I did have this video so I could kind of compare myself to other people, even though it's not really good to compare yourself to other people, it is kind of good to kind of get a ball range exactly on what they did right, what can you replicate, what they did wrong, and what can you avoid. Exactly, kind of just like pave the path. So in this video, I will talk about extracurricular activities. I'll be covering exactly what student organization to join, what volunteering hours to have, what shadow hours to do, if you need undergrad research, if you need an internship. So I'll just kind of cover exactly anything that's extracurricular related that's not on the GPA or DAT side. All right, the first one is student organizations. Uh, most people say join a pre-dental club. For me, I personally didn't join the pre-dental club, but I was somewhat involved. The reason why I didn't really join the pre-dental club was because like coming into undergrad, I didn't know that many people my first year. So when I was keep going to these meetings, even though it was informative and I was getting a lot of knowledge from it, I wasn't making any relationship or friendship. I felt like there was already like groups and cliques and everyone already knew each other beforehand and they weren't really that welcoming. So it kind of just hit me, why am I going to these events even though they are providing great information? Why am I wasting an hour of my week going to these events when I could go to a different organization and do actual meaningful change and also build meaningful relationships? So what student organizations did I get involved in? For me, since I am from a Somali background and Columbus holds the second largest Somali community in the United States, I did get involved with uh, Somali Students Association. In this organization, we did do a lot of mentoring, we did do tutoring programs, we did fundraiser dinners, and we did a lot of stuff for the community. So that's the one organization I did join. If I had to redo it again, I would have got more involved with the pre-dental club. The reason is when I was applying to dental schools, a lot of dental schools were asking me, hey, were you involved in pre-dental? What's the reason why? And even during the interview, one of the interviewees did ask me, hey, what's the reason why you weren't that involved with the pre-dental club? Uh, but I did explain myself that, hey, I wasn't really making that meaningful impact, so I did take my talents elsewhere. So the second one, programs. Uh, what programs should you get involved with in the summer or during breaks? Uh, the reason why programs look good on your application is because it shows that you're passionate about dentistry and that you are exposed to dentistry. A lot of people that are applying to dental schools aren't really exposed to dentistry that much and dental schools want to see if you are exposed to it and if you love dentistry. So one program I will highly recommend to any student that's applying to dental school is uh, SHAPEP. That's Summer Health Profession Program. Uh, this program is geared towards minority and any students from underserved backgrounds. So if your community doesn't have that many dentists, you should go to this program. So this program is a six week program where dental schools invite uh, students from diverse backgrounds into their dental school and they offer them science classes in the dental school and they also give them shadow and experience where they get to physically shadow a dentist they also get to work in uh, clinicals where you do waxing you do fillings and you also make mouth guards so the point of this program is to show students what dental school is like and also give them exposure to dentistry and the other good thing about this program it is really diverse where they do bring in a lot of minorities and anyone from underserved backgrounds so you get to work and uh, collaborate with people that do look like you and also that are from similar backgrounds as you. Because let's be realistic, in my personal experience, when I was going to the pre-dental club, I wasn't really seeing that much uh, diversity in there or any minorities. So when I was going to this program, I did see that, hey, there is a lot of people that look like me and that do also want to be dentists or that do want to be physicians or that do want to be pharmacists. So that's why I really like this program and I strongly recommend anyone that's thinking about applying uh, to dental school to do this program. Another program I strongly recommend is going to any pre-dental days that your dental school offers. Mostly every school does offer a dental day where they invite uh, pre-dental students or any undergrad students to come and shadow uh, dental students. So the typical setup in this program is they first do a panel where pre-dental students get to ask dental students any question they have about the application or about dental school. And after that, they go to clinicals where they get to physically see the dental student work with their 
your hands and also you get to also try to work with your hands. So if you have this event at your dental school, go to it because there's a lot of benefits associated with it. So number three, undergrad research. Uh, should you do undergrad research? For me, I personally didn't do undergrad research, but I did work at a internship where I did do research there that was dental related where we studied um, natural teeth whitening products and I did do a lot of tests with uh, saliva and how that affected uh, the sensitivity of the enamel. But I did talk to a lot of people in admissions committee and they told me that they don't require undergrad research. It's like, for example, you remember back in elementary school when you got an A on assignment and the teacher gave you like a smiley face sticker. That's what basically research is to the application. It's like you already have a good application. If you want to make it a little bit more better, just do undergrad research, but it's not really essential to do undergrad research. Uh, the fourth one, volunteering slash employment. Uh, the first one, do volunteering and make sure it's not compensated because they do actually doubt on the application, hey, was this volunteering or was this employment? Uh, because like, if you're not getting paid for it, it does show that you are passionate and you are taking your time out of your day to give back to those less fortunate or give back to your community. So what kind of volunteering to do? First off, make sure it's community-based, either within your local community or globally. And also if it's dental related, it is a plus. For example, you could either go to underserved communities and educate them on the importance of oral health or you could go to abroad to third world countries and volunteer in dental clinics that way. The other one, employment, they really don't care about this section, but try to make it more dental related. For me, I personally worked as a student assistant in the oral surgery department. Working here really did have a lot of benefit for me. I did get a lot of shadowing hours. I also did get to meet and network with a lot of dental faculty at Ohio State. That's not only in the oral surgery department, but also throughout other departments. The other employment you could do is work as a dental assistant. A lot of pre-dental students really overlook this and don't really know that much about it. To become a dental assistant, you only need to complete a couple courses that take up to a month to two months. So during like your summer break or your winter break, take these courses, get certified as a dental assistant, uh, the benefits from this is number one, you get paid good money. You get paid from 15 per hour to 20 per hour. Uh, number two, you do work on your hand skills since you are physically working with the doctor. Number three, is it does show the dental admissions that you are passionate about the dental field and that you previously have work experience in the dental field. So the fifth one, shadowing hours. How many shadowing hours do you do? What specialty should you shadow? In my personal opinion, I recommend to do double what your school is requiring. Some schools require 60, some schools require 120. For me personally, Ohio State requires 60. I did, I believe around 120 to 150 range. Um, the reason why I'm saying this is because at the end of the day, it does show the dental school. I mentioned that you are passionate and you do have great exposure to dental school because dental school is really difficult. So they want to bring in people that they know that at the end of the day, they will complete dental school and they do have exposure to uh, the dental field. So how can you get more shadowing hours? Honestly, the best way is just to randomly call a dentist and just say, hey, can I come in and shadow you? I know you might be afraid at the beginning and if you get a couple of rejections, you might say, hey, what's the point in doing that? I'm keep getting rejected. Honestly, think about it. Do you really, if a dentist does reject you, do you really want to go to that dentist? Will they look out for your best interest? Will they give you the best shadowing experience? Will they answer all the questions that you need? So at the end of the day, look for a dentist that's passionate and eager to have you shadow. And if you are going out shadowing, make sure you come with questions. Don't just stand there in the corner. Make sure you ask some questions and be like, hey, how do you do this procedure? What may you get to dental? Do you have any advice? Kind of like be more engaging because it's like time and time again, I see a lot of pre-dental students that do go to shadowing hours. But at the end of the day, when they leave the office, they really don't know what they learned. They didn't ask them any questions. They're just standing there in the corner. The sixth one, this is an important one that a lot of pre-dental students forget about. In the application, they do ask you about any hand dexterity skills, any experience you have working with your hands. The reason why dental schools are asking this is they kind of want to see how good you are with your hands. And it is reasonable that if you do come into dental school and you never worked with your hands and you really don't have any hand-eye coordination, it will be a lot more difficult going through dental school. So if you do get a lot more exposure while you're an undergrad, it does look better on your application. And also it does help you in dental school when you are applying. So what kind of hand skills did I have? So for me, uh, believe it or not, I actually do know how to do hand out. Also for my internship, after my research was finished and when we came up with a product, we had to apply it onto ourselves and also to our coworkers. So I was really comfortable with working in people's mouth and with a mirror. So what's some things you could do to help your hand skills? Uh, honestly, pick up a skill, uh, whether it's painting, uh, playing a piano, hand sculpturing, pottery, henna. Just pick up a skill that you work with your hands and kind of like keep improving on it day by day. Okay, then that's all for extracurricular activities. One last advice I want to leave with you guys is if your school does have a dental school, make sure you are in close communication with them. Make sure you go to their events. Make sure you reach out to them. Make sure you sit down with them, have them help you with your application, give you any advice. Make sure they know you by name or at least by face. So later on when you do apply to dental school and you have any questions about your application, you could go to them. 
All right, then I hope you guys liked this video and it was informative. Like I said in my previous video, I will continue this series until the end of June. Uh, if you have any more questions, uh, please feel free to comment down below. Uh, DM me, message me, and I will do a Q&A at the end of the series, kind of answer all your questions. Uh, but like always, stay blessed, stay safe, take care.